I've never done one of these before and I'm like a little bit nervous. So last week I decided to ask people for questions for an artist Q&A on both my YouTube and my Instagram because I've never done one before and also I'm at a point with YouTube and Instagram where I can't reply to everyone's questions anymore which sucks so if I can have a place where I can just answer questions that come frequently that's gonna be also, uh, 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 I never introduce myself in any of these videos. I'm just like, eh, whatever. Um, <laughs> and I also find it weird to be like, hi, I'm Emily. But, hi, I'm Emily. I like things and stuff and I paint kind of. That's about it. I, I like showing people how I paint and helping other people paint. That's about it. That's my whole thing. And then just being a ding dang goofball. I'm also doing something a little bit special for this video. I'm doing a giveaway. So at the end of this video, I'm gonna talk about all the details for that, but <sighs> stay tuned till the end to get some info about how you can get these prints. So I'm gonna look through the questions that people asked on both YouTube and Instagram, and I'm just gonna go through and answer them. So let's do YouTube first. Load, please. I've got things to do. Challenge what the future holds. Trying to keep your head up to this level sink today. Okay. We got it. It's pulled up. Ariana Mickle, we are all me. I'm just gonna just absolutely butcher every single person's name. Mickle, me. Please forgive me. I'm gonna just sound like a total goober saying all these names, but. How did you start on YouTube? Have you planned it beforehand or just started making videos out of the blue and basically just for fun, question mark? I really started because I love painting time-lapse videos. When I was first starting to paint, I found time-lapse videos so helpful for me. Being able to see in like a few minutes span a painting come to life and just like the steps and the processes through that, it was so interesting to me and encouraging for me as an artist to see like something start from nothing to something so gorgeous. Kind of started my YouTube with just the intention of putting time-lapse videos out, but I also realized that I love educational content and I got questions from people asking how to make what I was making. And I really like, I like being a teacher. I like sharing information. I find it super fun and enjoyable. And I'm, I'm a little bit of a ham. So like, I'm happy to put myself out there a little bit. So I just found like a natural combo of me loving painting, loving teaching, loving sharing information and community and things like that. And it just all kind of rolled together into YouTube videos. I also followed some awesome artists on YouTube too that were super inspiring and I was like, I wanna do that, that looks like so much fun. So here I am, that's what I do now. I guess, that's my thing. Sixty Cena Roy says, how old are you and did you start painting? I, I did start painting. I'm pretty sure you're asking how old was I when I started painting. I'm currently, tw oh it took me a second, oh my God, I forget how old I am. I'm 25, which isn't that old. <laughs> but I still forget. I started getting serious about painting, I think when I was 21. I think I was, tw no, 22. So I haven't been painting for like that long compared to some other people, but I've been an artist my whole life. I did lots of drawing and stuff like that. Maybe I was 21, I don't know. Let's say like three or four years I'm serious about painting. Abbas Bach asked, what's the first thing I need to keep in mind if I want to be a better painter? Patience. Literally, that is the number one thing in my personal opinion. Patience and perseverance. Not giving up, continuing to paint, and then being cool with not being great for a while until you continue to practice and practice and practice. What it's gonna take is time. Give yourself lots of time. You're gonna grow into the painter you wanna be, I swear. I, I promise you. What else did we got? Miriam asked how to find reference photos for painting. I actually made a video about that a while back. I'll link it down in the description. I use lots of different ways to find reference photos. I take my own, I find them online, I find them from other artists I really admire who offer the reference photos. Uh, Come paint with me asked how do you make your thumbnail? I think your thumbnails look amazing and profession. Happy face. Very good. I use Photoshop. I'm a fan of Photoshop. I use it very frequently. Aparna Kathari says, you are really intriguing to me. Dot, dot, dot. What is your fave medium? Oils, oil paints. How long have you been making art? Uh, my whole life. Is it easy making money as an artist? Ah. Uh, that's a hard question to answer, yes and no. Do you mean a lot of money or do you just mean money in general? Because if you're just looking to make some kind of money, even if it's like really small, I'd say yes, it's easy to make money off your art if you're selling on like an Etsy or if you're at like a little fair or something, but it doesn't mean necessarily it's easy to make a good amount of money with art. It's kind of complicated. Mushul Fatima says, are you married? 
Yes, I am married. I got married this year. COVID canceled my big wedding plans and we got married in our backyard. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Fox, who's one of my fave subscribers, always comments on my stuff, love cat. Says, were you an artistic child? Also, most importantly, how is Bindi doing? Bindi, how are you doing? She's just looking at me. You doing good, baby? I was a super artistic child. My mom also likes to tell a story about how when I was in kindergarten, everyone got to do a finger painting. When she went to like the parent-teacher night and all the finger paintings of all the kids in the class were up, it was like paint splatters and scribbles, scribbles and lines, scribble, scribbles. And then there was a cat with the bow tie and eyebrows and then more scribbles and stuff. And the cat with the bow tie and the eyebrows was mine. <laughs> Jalene Rivera says, what are your tips when trying to paint photorealism? I've done a couple realistic pieces in both oils and acrylics. However, I'd love to improve to make them look even more real. Thanks, heart. Uh, if you're going for photorealism, my number one tip is color accuracy and practicing mixing colors to exactly replicate what your reference photo is. I've got a video on that in the description also, but it can be tricky. It's hard. You gotta figure out how to have an eye for color. That's what I would focus on if I were you, if you wanna get better at photorealism. Chu and Lin says, how much time in one painting? That depends. Sometimes they take an hour. Sometimes they take eight hours. It just depends on the size and the detail, how many times I'm going over it. I feel like on average, I probably spend like three hours. I oh girl, I have no idea how to say your name. Michelin? Cornelius? Oh, I'm so sorry. I usually paint when I'm feeling happy and inspired. Lately, I've been feeling the complete opposite. How do you manage to paint during moments of numbness? This is a hard question, and also I continue to struggle with this, and I think everybody does. I think this is a universal problem that artists face. I recognize motivation as something that has an equilibrium that's not consistent. They go up and they fluctuate and they go down and they go up and they go down. So if you're at a point where you've had motivation, and you're feeling it start to tank or maybe you hit rock bottom, and remember that it's gonna come back up because that's how that cycle works. It'll balance itself out eventually. So you might be in a period where you're, you're feeling a little funky and stuck and that's okay. It's not gonna be forever is the thing. But if you're still feeling like you're unmotivated and you wanna continue to paint, I would recommend doing studies of artists that you really like. So say you have a favorite artist and you love a specific piece from them, try and exactly replicate it as close as possible. Not only is it like super great practice for you, but you're gonna feel like you did something productive. It's going to get you a little bit out of that cycle of never feeling like you can paint at all. Wendy Simone says, would you consider doing a collab with Mira Byler? I love Mira, I would love to. Actually, we don't even live that far away from each other. She's super sweet, we've talked a bunch on Instagram, but it's COVID times right now, so I don't see anybody in real life. But I love Mira, I would love to. She's a sweetie pie. Doodler cartoonist says how to overcome imposter syndrome. That should be its whole own video cuz oh boy. Oh god, I don't even know how to approach that in just like a couple sentences. I, I'll do a video on this, but valuing yourself and realizing that you have value outside of other people's perceptions of you and honestly, you probably believe other people's perceptions of you are lower than they actually are. People honestly don't give that much of a shit. You're judging yourself more than other people are judging you. So if you're feeling like you're not good enough, people are thinking things about you, you don't feel like you're a legit artist, you probably are and probably no one's at all thinking that you're not. <laughs> it's more about you and your own personal opinions of yourself. I, I can go way deep into this later, but my opinion would be be nice to yourself. Amna says, how did you manage to grow your YouTube channel? Love you. I had a solid Instagram following before I started my YouTube channel. I think I had like, <coughs> oh, I just breathed in my own spit. Bleh. What was I talking about? Oh, I think I had like, maybe like 50,000 Instagram followers before I started my YouTube channel. So there was some trickle over from that. Um, I found like consistency, posting videos consistently helped people find me a little more. I think I just lucked out because in March, YouTube put me up as their creator on the rise for the day. So I was on the explore feed in the US for like a full 24 hours, which got me a little bit of boost. I, this also needs to be like its whole own video. If you want me to go more in depth about any of these questions, let me know in the comments below, please, because I am more than happy to focus on videos on specific things. Fiona says, are oceans and sunsets your favorite thing to paint or do you just find them easier? 
I'm a little confuddled by your question, Fiona. I, I definitely don't paint things because they're easy. I love oceans. I grew up by the ocean, so I really am drawn to water. And now that I live in a place where I'm landlocked, the sky is kind of a bigger inspiration for me, so I've been feeling lots of sunsets more and I've been combining them with the ocean. So no, I, I just really like to paint oceans and sunsets. I wouldn't necessarily think that I do that because they're easy. <laughs> do you think painting oceans and sunsets are easy? Because Emma asks, Fave oil color? Mine is alizarin crimson. I love this question. Um, what's my fave oil color? I think I most use French Ultramarine. I use it all the time, but I also big fan of magenta, specifically quinacridone. Qua, qua, qua. I can't even say it. Quinacridone magenta. I love that question. What a cute question. Maddie Creates says, what is the one thing you started applying to your artwork slash ethic that made the biggest difference in your quality? I love this question. I think that the biggest difference for my quality is not giving up too early. I feel like for a lot of artists, it's really easy as you're going through a painting or a drawing or whatever you're creating to get into it and feel like it's ugly and it's not going anywhere and it's at a stage where it's just like bleh and you're so frustrated by that, you give up early. It's really important for me to realize when I'm in those like ugly stages of my painting that you need those ugly stages, quote unquote ugly, because they're a foundation. So the more you push the details, the colors, the contrast, the more time, effort, and love you put into your painting, that's gonna get your quality up. It's about love, how much love you put into your painting. Love in your painting is palpable. I bet that sounds like the hippiest bullshit you've ever heard in your entire life, but I swear to God, if you put more love in your painting, that love's just gonna radiate out of there. It's gonna just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense at all. A FIFA artwork asks tips for starting a YouTube channel. Do it. Like that's my number one tip. I, all the time, I, I know friends, I know family, I know people online who are like, oh, I wanna start a YouTube channel, I have these ideas, and then they don't do it. They never follow through with it. I know that there are a few people that could be watching this right now and I, I'm talking to you right now. I'm like, you know who I'm talking to. Start it. If you don't start it, You'll never go anywhere. Just make anything, make anything that makes you happy and put it out there. Make content that you feel like you would enjoy and put it out there. Step over that hurdle of being scared that it's not good enough, that you're nervous about what people will think. Who cares? Make it because it's fun. Just, just go for it. Too many people let the perfectionism stop them or their fear of what other people are gonna think. Don't put imperfect things out there, who cares? I have feelings about that. I want people to pursue their creative endeavors and when people let themselves have some roadblocks between them, I'm like, girl, 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 girl. Who cares? Get out there, enjoy your shit. How do you overcome art block? This one's tough. I think one of the things that I do when I have art block is give myself a break. I allow myself to spend some time not painting or to focus my creative energy on something else, like music or cooking. If I'm not quite feeling inspired enough by my art, sometimes I just need a little bit of space from it and I can come back with new ideas, new inspiration. I feel like that's not a super common tip that people give for art block, but I think it's okay to give yourself a little bit of space when you need it from things. You don't have to go, 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 go on the same thing. You don't want to burn out is the thing. I don't want to make myself burn out on painting. So I'll give myself a break. Kira says, I know it's annoying that I'm saying this instead of a question, but I love you. That's not annoying. That is very sweet. That's super sweet. Thank you. Artie Uden says, why do you like painting the sea? My whole life, I grew up by the ocean and spent a lot of time in the water. Lots of boogie board and baby. I was a boogie board baby, loved it. I even surfed for a little while, which I loved, honestly. I die to get back in the water right now. I've just been really always inspired by the ocean, really drawn to the ocean, really drawn to marine animals like fish and marine mammals and stuff like that. Oh, I'm crazy about fish. Aquariums are like my favorite place in the world, literally. Monterey Bay Aquarium is my favorite place in the whole world. And now in particular, I feel super close to painting water because I live in the Midwest now and there's no ocean anywhere around me for I think like a thousand miles. Darmarik one says, boyfriend? Boyfriend? Mm -mm. No, 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 no. RC Caboodle says, you are so cute, heart. <laughs> Thank you, girl. Red Tree Flowers asks, how do you motivate yourself to paint daily? I don't. <laughs> I get this question a lot. It's like, how do you make the time to paint every day? And I'm like, I don't paint every day. Life's busy and I actually, I'm not 
an artist full time, I work full time and I do art on the side. But to get myself to have time for art, I like to have a solid schedule in my day. So like, I'm like, I work on this stuff from eight to 10 and then I have my breakfast and then I do this and this from like, whatever, 11 to one. Pencil out specific time for creative stuff and that could be painting, that could be piano, that could be like whatever. It's a colorful stroke says, when did you decide to become a full-time artist? I didn't, I'm not a full-time artist. Art is my side thing, straight up. I, I do all my stuff and I love it and art's a huge part of my life and it, I, it's my business and I'm growing, but I work full-time also. You could do that too. You don't necessarily have to be a full-time artist to be like, I'm an artist. I consider myself an artist even though I'm not a full-time artist. Things to think about. Oh my God. Artsy Vismaya says, what is your profession? Are you a singer? I could cry. You were so freaking sweet. I wish I was a singer. <laughs> I do really like to sing. I'm passionate about it and I, I uh, put a lot of work into my singing voice, but I'm not a singer professionally at all. I'm a graphic designer, so I work full time as a graphic designer from home and also do my art stuff. I really like my job. And so if anybody's like, why did you just quit your job to become an, an artist? I'm like, because I like what I do. I work for and with amazing people. So for the foreseeable future, I'm keeping my job. I very much enjoy it. <gasps> oh, Anusha Gupta says, how can someone be so cute and so relatable at the same time? <laughs> You're too sweet to me. I know. Pretty cute. Pretty relatable. I know. Ooh, love this. Tin Splash says, is it healthy for a new artist to recreate other artists artworks? By the way, love you. Yes, absolutely. I personally feel like it is so such a positive way for you to learn is by trying to recreate things by artists that you really like. If you wanna be like a specific artist, paint things like a specific artist, try replicating their work. The thing about it though to remember is to not then post it and be like, I made this and it's my original idea. If you do do that, say, this is a copy slash study of this artist who I love and inspired by, I did this because I wanna learn from them. That's very flattering and nice. Make sure you say that if you do do a copy of somebody's and you wanna post it. But by all means, I'm a huge fan of doing studies of people's work. I think it's amazing as a tool to learn how to paint. Okay, got so many questions. There's a lot of like really nice people just being like, you're awesome, I really like you, you're cool. That well, makes me feel really good about myself. Thank you guys. Alexander325 asks, what degrees do you need to be an artist? I, I'm a college dropout, baby. You don't need a degree to be an artist. I didn't go to art school at all. Uh, I was just taking my general ed stuff and I actually got picked up as a graphic designer so I ended up not graduating. I didn't, you don't gotta get no degree. <laughs> I think art school can be a phenomenal experience and I think you can have an amazing time in art school. It can give you great opportunities. It can really give you like the motivation to, to pursue art in a specific way, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to give you the perfect standoff point to make art your job. So this video is also a little bit special because I'm doing a giveaway, which I haven't done in forever. Three different sets of these prints, so they'll come together and three people will get both of these prints. So to enter this giveaway, all you have to do is leave a comment below. Let me know what you want to see me talk about more in these videos or create more in these videos. If it's a topic that we only touched on in this video or if it's specific painting you wanna do, let me know in the comments below. And also leave a comment on my Instagram post that's gonna be up right now as well. Comment on both of those places and you'll be entered for this giveaway. They're really cute. I'm very excited about how these prints turned out. Oh, this one's supposed to go this way. Also be subscribed to my channel and be following my Instagram. I will be checking so you better watch your back. So be subscribed slash following two comments and you're entered. If you have any more questions for me too, feel free to put them in the comments below. I had a lovely time and I'll see you in the next video. Maiden day, now that I found you, I can let you go. I'll build my world around you and teach you so. Baby, even though you don't need me.